I'm Steve Saunders, and over the past 30 years, I've seen a lot of tech hype. But this time, it's not just about technology. It's about economics, architecture, and survival. These networks, they're going to be moving a lot more traffic. We're really going to see a lot more need for very high bandwidth, massive amounts of connectivity, and things that the service providers have been doing forever. What do I do today to make sure that I'll be ready for what's coming in the future? From hosting GPUs to intelligent optical routing that can cut cloud costs, CSPs are staking out new business models. But how can smart investment in AI era infrastructure reshape revenue streams and future-proof the telco playbook? I'm trying to understand where the real returns from AI are coming from. How are service providers adapting? Where are the business models? and who is actually positioned to win. This is the next big evolution. There's a lot of technology that's not going to be compatible with AI, so th this all has to be updated. The service provider industry has a unique challenge. Some of them are going to meet it, but every one of them is going to struggle with it. And we really don't know how quickly everything is going to change, but everything is going to change. First and foremost, Service providers want to understand how their networks are going to be impacted because of AI. How is the traffic going to look? How will it be different from what they've seen in the past? And how do they handle it? The shift isn't theoretical. It's already forcing foundational change. Legacy networks that were built for stability now need to evolve for agility. Lumen, we realize the internet architecture is not where it needs to be for an AI economy. When you're in a carrier neutral facility and you go into multiple hyperscalers, it means you have to buy ports and multiple ports at all of these locations. By changing that architecture, we can get to the point where all of that cost disappears. We built networks traditionally for resiliency and for stability, and they, yeah. the trade-off has been they're really hard to change. So what we're doing with the mobility services platform is introducing a great deal of automation and flexibility to allow our service providers to quickly address market needs, uh, creating new services, to ensure that they're providing uh, the performance that their customers demand. That's why there's a renewed focus on convergence, bringing IP and optical together in one simplified layer. It's called routed optical networking, and it's redefining the rules and business models of the telco game. Routed optical networking is about simplifying the network architecture. Traditionally, you have multiple layers in the network. You have an IP layer, um, and you have an optical layer, that's your physical layer that has you know, the light or, or lasers. It means that you're converging two parts of your network, simplifying your network, and at the end of the day for our customers, it dramatically reduces their costs. It lowers their capex, it lowers their opex, and it lowers the power consumption. When you leave the data center now, you have a much more challenging problem. You have to send the signal over existing fiber, which means you really have to put many signals on one fiber. Thanks to advances in silicon photonics, we can now serve at least the transponder portion of that market with pluggable coherent optics. Pluggables are relatively new technology and they've really advanced the idea of what has been historically called IP over WDM, allowing us to put a pluggable directly in a router. And when you do that, you can get massive power savings. We have customers that have that have advertised 90% power savings in replacing a chassis-based transponder with a pluggable optic. So the economics are super compelling. One service provider which is already leveraging routed optical networking, or RON, is Colt Technology Services. RON plays a big role. 80% of our European core is now running over RON, which means we have power savings, 97%. We went from 170 watt to 5 watt per 100 gig but at the same time we have less rack space because we have typically 35 times more capacity than we had before with our previous generation of network equipment. We have the capacity, we have stable links, which means SLA, uh, the, the five nines is fully met. Fiber used to be the foundation, now it's a revenue strategy. The players who simplify, converge and automate will lead, but only if they align their infrastructure with the AI applications and economics of the future.